Uh, Mrs. Opperness sent to say a few words on this great occasion. Good afternoon, friends, Dr. Prati Banerjee. Shri Vijay Data, Shri Gulam Nabi Azad, Honorable Minister, and Prashantoda, Dr. Prashanto Banerjee, who has really been quite an inspiration. Um, let me start by telling you a short anecdote. I was shooting for a film, uh, a serialized documentary, once at a place called Tolly's Nala. Now, Tolly's Nala, I don't know how many of you know about it, but it's uh, the dirtiest stretch of water possible. We were in a boat, and what was happening was beside us floated by the dead carcass of a pig. It was enmeshed with the structure of a Durga Pratima, and it was blowing bubbles, it was rotting. About a hundred yards away, there were these young boys who were jumping into the water and uh, diving in and uh, taking the water into their mouths and spitting it out and it was catching the sun. It was rather a beautiful sight. But it set me wondering. I thought, these boys are not going to go home and drop dead. They're living. They look perfectly healthy. And I wondered how they had developed this kind of immunity. Because I thought that if I tried to do the same thing, I would immediately die of food poisoning. And it set me wondering, I'd heard somewhere that this is what homeopathy does. It slowly builds up your immunity so that your body itself can tackle the disease. But it was very difficult to place one's faith in homeopathy because where was the research after Dr. Honeyman, I, at least I didn't know of any research, I thought it had stopped there. And the way it, uh, the approaches of the doctors were usually, they treated individuals according, different individuals had different medicines, they treated the entire individual. There was no specific, um, there was no specific disease, at least not that I knew of, for any specific illness. So how were they codifying it? How was scientific research possible? All this had set me wondering. And this brings me to the tale of a very illustrious family, uh, the most important member of which was a person no less than Ishwar Chandra Bidyashagar himself. Ishwar Chandra Bidyashagar had severe attacks of migraine. And he had been uh, treated by and looked at by several doctors of conventional medicine. Nobody had been able to do anything. Then he went to visit his friend Rajendra Lal Dotto, who used to practice homeopathy. And Rajendra Lal Dotto said, you've been doing this for such a long time and you've been suffering. Now, why don't you have some of my pills? So he said, tomorrow he chota chota shada shada guli ke amar ki hobe. Meaning, what, what will these little pills of yours do for me? But he said, try it. And Ishwar Chandra Bidyashagur did. And one dose, and he was cured. And he got deeply involved in homeopathy. He said, this is fantastic. This is fantastic for a country like India, where, you know, um, these pills are not expensive. They don't have side effects. They can cure people. This is wonderful for a country of, uh, of these proportions and this kind of uh, poverty that we have. What is wonderful is that he then started practicing and he got his youngest brother, Ishan Chandra Bandhavadha, interested. Ishan Chandra also took it up. He went back 
Vidyashagar uh, went back to his native village of Virshingo and asked his brother to, to study homeopathy, which he did. The descendants of Ishan Chandra uh, Ishan Chandra uh, Bandhapadhyay and Rajendra Lal Dotto are both both the representatives of these two families are here today, which is a wonderful occasion. Here we have the photograph of the late Porish Nath Bandhapadhyay, his son, Dr. Prashant Bandhapadhyay, and his son, Dr. Pruti Bandhapadhyay. And here we have the direct descendant of Rajendra Lal Dotto, Shonok Dotto sitting right in front of us. Let's give him a big hand. Now the moment you hear of Dr. Parishnath Bandhupadhyay, you think P. Banerjee of Mihijam. Unfortunately, even though he was a legendary doctor, some people confuse Dr. Prashanto Banerjee as P. Banerjee of Mihijam. He is not. He left Mihijam in 1960 and came away to Calcutta. He came away to Calcutta and his father told him, listen, you have the experience of uh, seeing, treating so many different patients. You're no less than the best doctors in Kolkata. When you go to treat them, you should not charge any less than any of the best doctors in Kolkata. With one exception, you don't charge the people who can't afford this amount. So, Dr. Prashanto Banerjee came away to Calcutta in 1960 and he started practicing with the princely sum of rupees 16 per visit, which was charged by all the best doctors. The only irony was that those who could afford to pay that sum didn't come to him. They went to the, all the conventional doctors of mainstream medicine. So, Dr. Prashanto Banerjee only treated those who couldn't who could not afford that amount and so he ran a charitable clinic which he still runs today now he didn't even have enough money to have a rented house so he lived with his wife krishna and his daughter nobomita in the clinic itself things only changed about two years later when there was this young bar at law who was a, a boy who was studying uh, to be, become a bar at law in London, he had developed ulcerative colitis. And all the physicians in London told him, look, we can't do anything for you, just go back to Calcutta. Basically, go back to Calcutta to die. So his father, in desperation, came to Prashantoda and uh, said, save my son, which he did, which he did. This turned the tables. And this also gave Dr. Prashanto Banerjee the incentive to really start to start a, a protocol which now has been uh, come to be known as Banerjee Protocol. This treats diff this treats the disease. This has specific medicines for specific diseases. And it also has specific, has specific doses, just like in mainstream medicine. Dr. Prashanta Banerjee uses diagnostic tools. He um, uses specific medicines for specific diseases. And what he does is he has specific doses. This was possible. Protip was born in 1964. He grew up watching his father treat patients till about 2 a.m. When he was about six years old in 1970, he was sent off to Darjeeling to study. And his sister also joined him in Loreto school. I think Proti, <clears throat> over there when he was studying there, he used to come home for holidays. But when he came home for holidays, he was very bored because none of his playmates were there. So his father said, if you're so bored at home, why don't you come and sit at the clinic with me? Which is what Proti did. This started his interest in medicine. And finally, he went to UK to study homeopathy. When he graduated from there, uh, he was offered a teaching job there, which he rejected because he came back to join his father. He came back to join his father and 
uh, Pradeep Banerjee and Dr. Prashanthu Banerjee together started developing the Banerjee protocol. Pradeep was, he started practice in 1991 and he took charge of the charitable clinic that had been started by his father. Together they set up the Dr. Prashanthu Banerjee Homeopathic Research Foundation as a trust in 1993 to popularize their approach. Around this time, Dr. Prashanthu Banerjee realized the potential of this form of treatment that he had created and he began to present successful case studies at various international fora. But for many years he had to struggle, he had to struggle against the prejudices of those who practiced conventional systems of medicine, but don't forget that he came from the family of Ishwar Chandra Vidya Shagur and he had a lot of grit. He just pursued and so did Pratip. Pratip actually accompanied his father to many of these uh, scientific forum, many international scientific forum. He got very involved in documenting and uh, writing case studies and preparing scientific articles for peer-reviewed journals. Pratip brought a scientific approach and international standards. Why? To allow their research to be verified scientifically. You have to have case studies, you have to have the scans of the cancer right in the beginning and then every month you, after treating them you have to present further scans in order for us to see how uh, your medicines are actually treating the tumours. This took about another two, three years and uh, the Prashantada himself has told me about it how he had to get hold of at least 10 uh, patients whose, uh, whose, whose uh, you know, um, treatment he could follow. Now, it couldn't be outstation patients because obviously it, they would be difficult to get hold of. It had to be patients that he could be in touch with. <coughs> a lot of the time the patients would come to him, take their medicine and when they're feeling a little better they wouldn't come back. So, Prashantada had to send his people to get hold of the patients to come back and actually put them through scans, pay for their scans. You know, this, this shows that he is a descendant of the illustrious family of Ishwar Chandra Vidya Shagur. And get it all done. And finally, finally, it was presented to NCI, passed that very, very strict scrutiny and a paper was published. This immediately brought international attention to the doctor's Banerjee and to the Banerjee protocol. It was established, many scientific papers were published in peer-reviewed journals of which the one published on the action of Ruta 6, Ruta 6 and Calcarea Fos 3X on brain tumor cells drew a great deal of international attention. It was shown that the medicines selectively kill the cancer cells while they rejuvenate the normal cells. And then after the publication of this paper, patients from as many as 90 countries around the world have benefited from this treatment. Since 1977, both Prashanto and Pratip have been invited to a very large number of prestigious international conferences, symposia, seminars and meetings to deliver lectures present papers or discuss important aspects of their work in countries like the USA, Canada, Germany, the Netherlands, Spain, Portugal, Greece, Turkey, Japan, Australia and Brazil. In the past few years, they've also been invited by various institutions and state governments in India. The government of Tripura invited them to give a teaching seminar to government physicians. ACTREC a part of the Tata Memorial Center invited them to deliver a lecture on their treatment of various cancers at its Silver Jubilee Symposium. The Lokmat Publication House too invited them to lecture at the Lokmat Knowledge Series at Nagpur. To meaningfully serve medical science and humanity, there is a necessity to deliver focused and economical health care. Perhaps nothing could provide this better than the Banerjee protocols and the work of the foundation 
both aimed at making such an efficient, viable and scientifically acceptable system of medicine that is the medicine of the masses available to all. Opposition to the Banerjee protocols and the work of the foundation from the scientific community and followers of classical homeopathy notwithstanding everything augurs well for this new system of medicine. Much is required to make the Banerjee protocols and the role of the foundation known around the world. What is absolutely wonderful is that a practitioner of homeopathy decided to take on the world of mainstream medicine and make this into a scientific researched protocol which can serve the people. My, I congratulate the doctors Banerjee and I congratulate um, their, their uh, Banerjee protocols which I am sure will benefit the masses of India. Thank you so much.